Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church, Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations, where we generally look at one or another lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. And I'm still buzzing this morning from the excitement of last night's Alpha Course. As, as you may or may not know, we've been doing the Alpha Course now for, I believe we're on week six. And yesterday we talked about how it is that we can read the Bible. And it was so exciting to have these wonderful conversations with the people taking the course about the impact the Bible has had on their own lives, uh, how they've been able to understand more and more about God as they read. And we had wonderful conversations about different translations uh, and different ways in which the Bible is able to speak through that to them through the various types of, of translations. And we also looked at things like uh, what, a, what a, an apocrypha is. We looked at what uh, a, 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 an annotated Bible is so that the people can learn and how to read the scripture uh, with references to what is making reference to, right? Uh, something in Matthew's gospel uh, might be explained if we understand that Jesus is talking about something from Jeremiah or Isaiah, and an annotated Bible will have that noted at the bottom or in the column uh, so that you can look that up. So it was exciting to see people uh, interested and jotting down notes and heading out to look for uh, perhaps another translation or uh, version of the Bible that will help them to not only read, mark, learn, but to inwardly digest it um, with a study version as well. So it was exciting. So let's jump right back into Matthew's Gospel. Uh, we are now, of course, smack in the middle of the Passion narrative. And, uh, and, and we come now to the last moments of our Lord's death. Beginning at verse number 45. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, This man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now, when the centurion and they that were with him watched Jesus, saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And many women were beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee ministering unto him. Among them was Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's children. So, wow, right? The powerful effect of that. And it's a few words. I mean, it's not overly descriptive, right? It doesn't talk It's necessarily about the pain and the suffering of all that went on during those hours that Jesus was on the cross. But, we do get some interesting clues. First of all, all of the time and space continuum has been turned upside down by the death, the physical earthly death of Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity. That, that you know, the temple is rent in two, the curtain that divides the holiest of holies from the rest of the world in the temple. The curtain's been divided in two. The earth is shaking. The grave, people are getting up and rising from the dead because all has been upended. With, with the death of Jesus Christ, so much so that even the pagan centurions realize that something is going on. And one of them blurts out, this truly was the Son of God. And he's right. He's absolutely right, even though he doesn't really understand or comprehend that, what it really means. But it is interesting for us to take one quick look at what Jesus says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? and art so far from, the, from my cry, right? So what is Jesus doing there? Well, he's reciting the Psalms, right? That's the beginning of Psalm 22. And it is interesting that we look at that because when we talk about a Psalm, when we talk about the first line of a Psalm, we're implying, of course, the entire Psalm, that Jesus blurts out that for opening line, but if we read all of Psalm 22, so much is fulfilled as prophecy about the death of Jesus. Jesus is in his prayer on the cross, reciting the Psalms that he had prayed every day. 
as a member of the Old Covenant. And of course, we pray the Psalms every day too here. But not only is he praying those opening lines, but in doing so, he implies all the rest where ultimately he falls down and an acceptance of God's will for him and that God is ultimately his strength and his redeemer. And of course, he is God. So anyway, it's a little helpful for you when you get upset to think that he somehow feels like he's being abandoned. Read all of Psalm 22. It doesn't end in sorrow, but in redemption. So today's Wednesday, 1215 Holy Communion Service, 5 o'clock evening prayer. And I do hope that we will see you in church or see you online. May God bless you.